Okay, so this is part two of L'Hopital's rule. Okay, this next part is covering a determinate forms of these three types. These three are zero to the zero, infinity to the zero, and one to the infinity. They're indeterminate. So what we have here is a function raised to a function. So we're gonna be finding the limit of f of x raised to another function. And there's a trick to doing these. Just like in the previous section, when we had a function raised to a function, we we're trying to calculate the derivative of it. We introduced the natural log of both sides, and then we were able to use the power rule for logarithmic functions. So we're gonna be using the same idea. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let our y equal to that function raised to a function, and then we're gonna take both sides, natural log of both sides, and then natural log of y, we use the power rule, bring that power down, and then we will be finding the limit of natural log of y. And at the end, we'll have to compensate to get it back to just y. Okay, let's do an example. So like I said, we're gonna let y equal to those functions and then we're gonna take natural log of both sides. Power rule. And remember, x to the x is y. So we wanna keep in mind, we want the limit of y as x goes to zero to the right. So what we're gonna do though, I just wanna remind us what limit we need to find but we're gonna find this limit now. When we plug in zero, so this approaches zero and then zero to the right of natural log of x is a negative infinity. So this is our indeterminate zero times infinity. So we're gonna to have to bring one of them to the bottom we bring this to the bottom, we'll have to raise that because we can raise it to the negative one power, but then we'll have to do the chain rule. I think it's more complicated. But if we bring this to the bottom, then we'll just have polynomials left. So we'll bring the zero one to the bottom. So zero really is the same approaches one over infinity times a negative infinity. And that's negative infinity over infinity, which is our indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital's, but let's go ahead and bring that to the bottom before we use L'Hopital's. And then here is L'Hopital's, where I'll take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. We've run out of room, so I'll work down. Let's clean it up before we take the limit. So we've done this string, and what we have is actually, this is actually a natural log of y. But what did we want? We want the limit of y, not the limit of natural log of y. So let's reason this out. We want, since remember our y is x to the x. So let's reason this out here. This is just saying, the natural log of y is approaching zero as x approaches zero to the right. That's just what a limit means. So if I do this, then we get y approaching one as x approaches zero to the right. And this is just the definition of the limit as x approaches zero from the right of y is approaching one the definition of the limit. So we proved it because y is x to the x. If you want to write that in as your last step, here's our final answer. Okay, the next type of indeterminate form. So if we have the limit of two functions and you plug in that limit and you get infinity minus infinity, what we know here is the limit of each one does not 
exist, so therefore it cannot be distributed. This is indeterminate. So like I said, if each of these limits do not exist, the limit of f of x does not exist, it doesn't, and the limit of g of x does not exist, you cannot use the distributive rule like that. That was a condition of distributing the limit. So what can you do? If you do have this scenario, our trick is to combine f and g into one term. Let's look at an example. So when you plug in pi over 2 into tangent of x, sine over cosine, cosine of pi over 2 is 0 on the bottom, that's an infinity. And 1 over cosine, it's the same thing, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So like I said, our trick would be to combine these two into one term. Well, how would I do that? I'd have to make them a fraction. So we'll convert those putting those in terms of sine and cosine. And it looks like we already have a common denominator, so we can just combine them. And now when we plug in this, sine of pi over two is one, so we get zero. This looks like it's approaching zero. Cosine of pi over two is zero, and this is still indeterminate. But now we have this form where we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So now we're allowed to use it. So we can just say this is L'Hopital's. This is equal to L'Hopital's. These are equal. Sine of x is cosine of x. The constant drops. This is minus sine of x. And this cosine of pi over 2 is 0 minus... 1 is equal to 0, and looks like we've found our answer. It's just a coincidence that it's 0, because infinity minus infinity is not always 0. It's undetermined. We don't know. Okay. So let me just give you a list of indeterminate forms. It's helpful to know when you're finding limits. So the first one that we learned in Chapter 1, and our second one in Chapter 1, in this section, we learned infinity times zero is indeterminate because, remember, we can change this to infinity times zero can be written as one over infinity, which becomes infinity over infinity. And we can also change it to the infinity to one over zero times zero. So changing this to this, the zero is still there, we can get zero over zero. So this can cha be changed into either form. Sometimes they both can work, or sometimes just one of them works. So our fourth, fifth, and sixth for the first, so four, five, and six are the three indeterminate forms that we learned about in this video. And these we use natural log to find, like we did above. Number seven, our last indeterminate form. And here we combine like terms. Okay, so that's how we find limits of indeterminate forms. And I think it's always helpful to know when you don't have an indeterminate form. So forms that look like that, similar, that are not indeterminate. Our first one is zero over infinity, okay? They had have to, if they're stacked, they have to be the same thing. And the reason is this can be written as zero times one over infinity. And this is zero times zero. This is zero, which is essentially zero. And the other way around is similar. This is infinity times one over zero. It's infinity times one over zero could be plus infinity or minus infinity. 
which is infinity times infinity, which is infinity, plus or minus infinity, really. Our third one is actually zero to infinity. Again, it looks like these three. You know which ones are indeterminate, which ones aren't. Zero to the zero is definitely indeterminate. Infinity to the zero power is infinite and indeterminate. And one to infinity. Those could be doing something weird there. This one is, is essentially zero times zero times zero times zero. Infinity times, we do get zero. And we've already seen this, but if we have infinity times infinity, that's infinity to the power of infinity. No, just kidding. It's just infinity. Same with if I take an infinity plus an infinity. That's kind of like two infinity, which is just uncount uncountable also. So that's infinity. And that's the list of the ones that are not indeterminate. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.